I'm forming mitered finger joints at the top of a box. And the usefulness of a mitered finger joint may, um, may not be immediately apparent, but it would allow me to do a inlaid banding along the top edge if I wanted to. It also allows me to uh, put a, uh, cut a groove across here for a floating panel top to fit. It also looks uh, more finished at the top edge of the box when instead of things coming together like that, they come together in a, in a miter, so it's a, a slightly more attractive joint. And to form it, I have to take a, a marking gauge and I have to make a mark along there so I have a, an index point. Uh, to be able to do my setup. I put a blade in the table saw that has a square top cut. This one is made by Forrest and it's a woodworker two with a number one grind. And I set the blade height so it's just exactly at the height of the lower, the narrower finger. I use this fixture that I've made mounted on a uh, miter gauge to be able to cut the miters. As you start forming your miters, make sure that the piece is held slightly away from the stop so that you don't have a piece that gets trapped. So you do this in two cuts. First it's slightly away and then push it in tight for the second cut. On your next pieces, you notice it forms a remaining finger. To finish the joint, you have to turn the jig around to the other side and cut at the opposite 45 degree angle. To finish the joint, I flip the miter gauge around to the other side, 45 degrees opposite direction. And I make a preliminary cut so that nothing gets trapped. And so that forms my miter. And before I finish it, I will do a test fit and see how it goes with the opposite side. See, that's, uh, that's pretty good right there. So I can finish all the pieces at that same setting. So that is a mitered finger joint. It can be a fussy joint that requires practice.